I wanted to start off by saying a particular shout out to the children from St Mary's in Leicestershire. It's been amazing seeing some of the things that you've been doing with the tasks. And thank you so much for your messages of support. Um, and again, I extend that to so many people who, who've sent everything through that they've done. It's really wonderful to see. Um, so what we've done so far in this little unit of work, we focused on multiplication and then we've had a, a few days where we focused on division and now we've got a few days where we're going to look at some contexts and tasks where we tie together multi multiplication and division skills. Um, so that's what we're going to do this week and then on Friday, uh, Friday's lesson is more really digging into all the tasks and the things that you send through. Um, so keep them coming in and Friday's, uh, Friday's video, Friday's lesson is really going to be handed over to that. So again, can't wait for this week and I can't wait to get there. Uh, today we're going in with, uh, with ratio. Uh, so again, hopefully it's going to be a really thought provoking one. Well, today's mental warm up is provided to us by Emily. So thank you, Emily. Um, and this was something again that we, we had a look at, this great pattern that we came to look at uh, this time last week. Um, so let's see if we can have a go. I'm thinking of two numbers that add up to 32. When I multiply my numbers, I get a number less than 100. What could my numbers be? Um, love these types of, types of challenges, and this is a great one from Emily. So how many answers can you find? Can you find all of them? How do you know you found them all? Uh, pause the video, have a go. Okay. Um, I wonder if you found any solutions. So um, here, here, here are three that you could have. So it could be 31 and 1. Multiply 31 and 1 so that they have a sum of 32. Multiply them. The answer, of course, is 31. 30 and 2. Multiply those two together. It'll, it'll be 60. Uh, and again, 29 and 3. We're still underneath 100. But then when we go uh, and we go to 28 and 4, I know that that's not an option. Now, I'll tell you how I know that's not an option, because I know 25 times 4 is 100. So 28 multiplied by 4 must be more. Um, now, I'm going to show you one of the cheeky one you could have. Um, because, of course, I hadn't really opened up the idea that we might not use whole numbers. Well, how about this one? We could have 31.9 and 0 0.1. So there we go. They, they've got a sum of 32. And if I multiply them together, well, they'd only make 3.19. Thank you, Emily, again. A great way to get us started today. Um, now, we're going to kick off this week with uh, shopping and cooking. Um, and we've looked at lots of skills with multiplication and division, and now we're going to apply them in lots of, di lots of different contexts. And today we're, we're doing that through ratio. Um, so if you were to go to the, to the supermarket, um, you can buy ingredients in packets, although sometimes if you go to a counter, you might be able to ask for exactly how much of the food that you want. So, for example, the, the, the prices might be advertised like this. Turkey, rather than a price for a pack, they might say it's £1.60 per 100 grams. And then you can decide exactly how many grams you like. And can you see that chicken per 100 grams is a little bit cheaper? It's only £1.20. Um, so I've got a couple of questions for you to have a go at to get us started off here. So, well, what about 400 grams of turkey? What would that cost? And how many grams of chicken would you get if you're only spending 30p? Pause the video and have a go. Well, I always like to be able to put a picture to what's happening. So let's have a look at this one. Um, so turkey, again, it's for 100 grams, it costs £1.60. And um, so for 400 grams of turkey, I'll need four lots of £1.60, essentially. Um, so I've got to think, well, four lots of £1.60, that will cost £6.40 for that much turkey. Now, what about the chicken? How many grams of chicken do you get for 30p, if you've only got 30p? Um, so, well, I know £1.20, you get 100 grams. So I've got to think, well, what about for 30p? And here it's about thinking, well, what £1.20, what fraction, 30p is what fraction of £1.20? It's actually just a quarter. £1.20 divided by 4 equals 30. So I'd have to divide the, I have to divide the 100 grams by, by 4. So how much chicken will I get in grams? I'll get 25 grams. Now, have a look at this example here. So this is slightly different. 350 grams of turkey will cost how much and, and how many grams of chicken costs three pounds. Now, I think this is slightly more difficult. And now I want you to do a couple of things. So pause the video. See if you can work out how much uh, how much money it will cost and, and how, or how many grams you'll get. And why is this a little bit more challenging? See if you can see if you can think about that or, or I'll tell the screen that.
Okay, well, let's have a look. And, and again, at this time, I'm going to show some workings uh, here. So 350 grams of turkey. Well, if I'm going to work that out, well, I know 100 grams is £1.60. But I can't just multiply up now lots of 100 because I wouldn't actually get, of course, the 350 grams. So I've got to do a couple of There's a few things I could do. But let's say I could work out, well, 50 grams is going to be half of 100 grams. That's 80p. And then I could work out, well, how much is 300 grams? Well, of course, it is three lots of 100 grams. And now I'm in a position where I can work out 350 grams, uh, £5.60. Um, now, again, here, 100 grams uh, of chicken costs £1.20. So 200 grams of chicken costs £2.40. I can't just have another lot of 100 grams because then I'll be adding on too much money. So I've got to think, well, 60p. Um, how much? How many grams of chicken would I get for 60p? Well, that, of course, is half of £1.20. So it'll be another 50 grams. In total, £3. Now, have a look at these questions here. You might be able to work out the answers, or you might just be able to rank the questions by difficulty. What makes them slightly easier? Which makes another question slightly harder? Can you explain that? So you might be able to work out the answers to do that. You might not know. You might be able to work out some of them. But rank the questions by difficulty. Which one's hardest? Which one's easiest? Okay, well, let's have a look. I'm, I'm going to work through them and, and um, not to say that I'll tell you which one is easier or harder, but just some of my thinking here. So to make 50 cookies, um, I'll tell you what I did to work out. This is, recipe is enough for 20 cookies. So, so to work out how much I would need for 50 cookies, I thought, well, I'm going to have to half this to work out how much I need for 10 cookies. Um, so flour, well, I'll need 120 grams of flour. And then I did 120 grams times by five, that'll be enough for, for 50 cookies, 600 grams. Um, now, what about to make 80 cookies? How much sugar am I going to need? Well, I'll just need four lots of this recipe because this recipe is right for 20 people. Um, so let's have a look, sugar, 90 grams for 20, four lots of that, 360 grams. I find that one slightly easier because I just then need to do one multiplication. What about to make 25 cookies? Well, I'm going to have to work out how much butter I'm going to need for five cookies. So what I did, first of all, is I thought butter, 180 grams. Um, well, I'm going to have to divide that by four um, because 20 divided by four is five. So that will be 45 grams uh, for five people. And then if I add that to, to this amount, which is enough for 20 people, then that's enough for 25 people. Now, can you see the kind of the numbers that are chosen change very much the difficulty and the number of steps in the calculation that's involved. Now, this is a task that I'm not going to we're not going to work through. We're not going to answer entirely. And it's one of the questions that you have. Um, but I just I just wanted to kind of have a little look at it as an introduction, really. Um, so Karen and Sarah buy the same amount of meat, but Karen buys turkey and Sarah buys chicken. Now, we know that turkey is more expensive than chicken. And so Karen spends two pounds more than than Sarah. Now, Sarah will have bought how much chicken? Well, let's just have a think about this. So let's say they both bought 100 grams of their meat. Well, for 100 grams of turkey, it costs one pound 60 and 100 grams of chicken costs one pound 20. So if we were buying the same amount of meat and it was 100 grams that we were buying, then I would be spending an extra 40p on the turkey if it was 200 grams um, that we were buying. Well, you can see now it's another 80p that we're spending if we're buying the turkey. We get the same weight of meat. It's just the turkey costs that a little bit more. And I thought that might just help you when you come to that question. So to get to today's questions, click on the blue link underneath this video as normal. I've got a, a bit of a range for you here, so you can have a go again at task A. Um, one question involving tennis balls there, but still involves a ratio. Um, and then questions three and four uh, are about a recipe. So you can have a look at that one. It might be instead you have a go at task B. Um, this time we've got two recipes here. And for the extend task, um, so this is a, a recipe that I want you to use. And I want you to see if you can design a question that involves this recipe. Now, again, I would love to use the question that you design as part of the work that we can do on Friday's video, when we're going to do a kind of a bit of a recap of everything. Uh, the answers are at the bottom, uh, just like normal. Um, I hope you enjoy these challenges. And again, well done for, for logging in. I'm going to see you again tomorrow.